San Antonio police say the green-eyed monster jealousy played a role in a shooting overnight. Now they're looking for a man with a gun. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Four juveniles took police on a chase in Castle Hills this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, how that chase ended. And a live look outside with live cam. A little fog around. Some really kind of thick up in the hill country, at least earlier. Justin Horner, let us know about that and let us know about the rain that's headed this way. Ooh, it is Monday, March 2nd. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Hope you had a terrific weekend. How are the roadways looking? Well, the highways look pretty good. Now we do have a motor vehicle pedestrian accident. Wurzbach at data point, but the highways themselves still look pretty clear. Good. And mm -hmm. not really looking good outside as far as our forecast. Well, I'm kind of enjoying the warmer weather, but it is uh, humid it's and humid. Kind of sticky. That's the problem. And if you're heading out to school this morning, yeah, the weather looks okay. We'll be in the 60s. You may get away with some short sleeve shirts today, I'd say. Upper 70s uh, for highs this afternoon, mostly cloudy southeast. Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Humidity sticks with us. And that's one of the reasons we're seeing a little bit of fog this morning, too, in spots. Let's uh, take a look at the temperatures first. 65 at the airport, 61 Bernie State, 61 Kerrville, 59 Lost Maples. That's a cool spot. It's not that cool, though. And the humidity is helping to create that the fog around Kerrville. That's been the one spot where we've seen quite a bit of fog. 1.75 mile visibility there. Otherwise, here around San Antonio, we're doing just fine. Uh, just uh, some mostly cloudy if not cloudy skies, we'll probably see that through the noon hour. Maybe a couple breaks in those clouds later today. Uh, temperatures 71 noon time, 75 by 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 77 for your high temperature. And of course, as we've been talking about all morning, tomorrow night, the big story, because I think we're going to get some storms, maybe some stronger storms, and uh, they could produce some heavy rain. Uh, we're going to have much more on that coming up here in just a few minutes. But we do want to check in with Marcus. See how things are going on the roads, and you said we've got one incident going on. We do. Now, that one accident, not on the highway, so all the highways are clear of any accidents. Let's zoom in. That's going to be Wurzbach, uh, just uh, close to I-10, but it's actually Wurzbach at data point uh, where we have that major accident, motor vehicle pedestrian accident. So keep in mind, we do have a number of emergency vehicles there on Wurzbach at the intersection. Right now, as we take a look at various transguided cameras, 21 at Hildebrand. Southbound lane starting to pick up in volume. Northbound, not too bad there. Then 37 at 9th, also seeing an increase in the traffic. Just remember to buckle up before you head out this morning. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police are looking for a man who used bullets and a brick in an attack on another man overnight. It happened outside a home on the east side. Our Katrina Weber is there live where they found the victim, which was on East Houston and Walters Streets. And we understand that the suspect got away, but police do know who he is, Katrina? That's right. They say they do have a name. Uh, this is the actual location where they found the victim in a truck with a woman. But they say that the shooting actually happened at another location, really just a few blocks away from here. I'll show you that in the video. It was in the 2000 block of Lamar. Police say that the victim and a woman were standing outside a home there uh, talking around four o'clock this morning when the suspect drove up. He apparently did not like what he saw. Police say he was jealous and he got into an argument with the man, eventually hitting that victim in the head with a brick and then shooting him in his backside. The suspect took off. The victim and the woman jumped into a pickup and arrived at this gas station here at Houston and, and at East Houston and Walters. And that is where police found them and that is where they were able to get help. But again, they are still searching for that suspect who they say they do know his name. They do know who he is, and uh, he will be facing charges once they do take him into custody. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Four minors driving an alleged stolen car took police on a brief chase near Castle Hills this morning. The chase ended near Blanco and Wiseman on the north side. Sarah Costa is live on that scene. So, Sarah, what did police say these guys got away, or did they were they able to catch a few of these suspects? Good morning, David. They were able to catch two of those juveniles in that car, and the uh, two others they're still looking for this morning after they ran off on foot. This happened around 3.40 this morning when Castle Hills police saw the car the juveniles were in commit a traffic violation. That's when police ran the plates. The car came back as stolen. When, police, when Castle Hills police attempted to pull the driver over, the driver didn't stop and took police on a small chase in a neighborhood near Wiseman and Blanco. The driver then pulled over at Wiseman and Wynwood Drive. Four people jumped out of the stolen car and took off running. Police say all of those involved were juveniles. Police say the driver somehow injured himself and police were able to arrest the driver. 
who was treated for minor injuries. Now, the another passenger was also arrested. But like we said earlier, police are still searching for two of those other juveniles who ran away. One is a male and the other is a female. Live from the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. David and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. You can plan out your trip to the voting booth today ahead of tomorrow's Texas primary election. National, state, and local races will be on the ballot, including Bear County Sheriff, U.S. and state representatives to Congress, and the presidential nominee for each party. The polls will open at 7 in the morning, close at 7 in the evening. You can vote at any polling location across Bear County if you live in the county. Meanwhile, in the race for the White House, Pete Buttigieg ended his historic campaign. He decided to drop out after Joe Biden's big win in South Carolina. The focus now turns to Super Tuesday, which includes Texas 228 delegates. ABC's Kenneth Moton has the details. Overnight, Pete Buttigieg dropping out. The path has narrowed to a close for our candidacy, if not for our cause. After strong finishes in Iowa and New Hampshire, the former South Bend mayor struggled to win over minority voters, finishing fourth in South Carolina Saturday. The candidates remaining have one day left to make their case before 14 states go to the polls tomorrow. Fresh off his commanding win in South Carolina, former Vice President Joe Biden tells ABC's Eva Pilgrim he's taking nothing for granted. So do you think you can win on Super Tuesday? I don't know that I can win Super Tuesday, but I think that I'll be viable coming out of Super Tuesday. And then you have states that I think I'll do very, very well in, like Florida and Georgia and some other states as well. In Selma, Alabama, Biden, along with Senators Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar, marked the anniversary of the bloody Sunday violence of 1965, when demonstrators were beaten during a voting rights march. Congressman John Lewis, who was injured in the march and is now fighting pancreatic cancer, made a surprise appearance. Can I give up now? This morning, Biden is facing an uphill climb against delegate leader Senator Bernie Sanders, who spent far more money in Super Tuesday delegate rich states like California and Texas, where he leads in the polls. In Minneapolis last night, Klobuchar was forced to cancel a rally in her home state after protesters chanting Black Lives Matter took over the stage, shouting, demanding she drop out. The wild card tomorrow, billionaire Michael Bloomberg, who's on the ballot for the first time. The former New York mayor has faced criticism for his record on race relations. In Alabama Sunday, some churchgoers turned their backs on him. But Bloomberg says he's in the race for the long haul. If you don't finish in the top three on Super Tuesday, is that it for you? No, of course not. Uh, there's a number of elections after that. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And right now on KSAT.com, we have all the resources you need to make an informed decision tomorrow. We have information on polling locations, what you need to vote, and the background on candidates running in many of the national, state, and local elections. We even have several one-on-one -on -one interviews with presidential candidates who've made campaign stops here in San Antonio. All of that information and more is on our Vote 2020 tab at KSAT.com. Delta and American Airlines suspending flights to Milan amid an outbreak of the coronavirus. Italian officials say the country has nearly 1,700 confirmed cases and 34 people have died. Italy has the highest number of cases in the world outside of Asia. Trips to Rome, however, not affected. Meanwhile, stock futures have been up and down overnight after a long tumble last week. That saw the S&P lose more than 11 percent. The sell-off was driven by fears over the possible impact of the coronavirus on the world's economy. 5G wireless service may soon show up in Walmart stores. The Walmart Street Journal says Verizon and Walmart in talks to install 5G technology in some of its locations. Initially, the wireless service would be used to help power new health services being offered by Walmart. It's 638. It's 65 degrees.